In this video I'll be assuming two things. One, that Monster Hunter World was your first Monster Hunter, or you're just not completely familiar with everything that Generations and now Generations Ultimate will offer. And two, that you're probably well versed in the weapon that I'll be discussing, so this won't be a full on guide, but rather a quick summary on the differences between the weapons in the two games. Hey guys, what's up? Right now I'm going to be talking about the Lance. Now I love this weapon, I've been maining it since try, and I gotta say, I don't think transitioning from World to Gen Ultimate will be hard, but it will take some getting used to, because World spoiled us way too much. This is probably the best iteration of Lance that we've ever had, and there were just so many quality of life changes and movement changes that made the weapon feel so much better. It pretty much plays the same as it's always played, but there's just so many things that make the weapon a lot more comfortable and more fun to play. First of all, we can hop forward. Such a tiny change helps a lot with just being able to stay aggressive, make small little movement changes, and help with repositioning. We can also shield dash, not just forward, but also from side to side. Out of the shield dash, we can still do the shield bash, but now we also have this lunge attack that does a little triple hit, which kind of resembles something from Gen Ultimate, which I'll talk about soon. Again, these little movement additions seem so minor, but when you add this to a weapon like Lance, it just honestly made it so much more comfortable. It let us play around with the charge a lot more, letting us hop from side to side or completely turn around. And a really nice little thing is that we're able to shift the direction of our actual charge poke in case we're a little bit off. And last but definitely not least, the power guard. I really like the power guard because even though I dabbled in both guard lancing and evade lancing, the power guard was kind of like the Monster Hunter team finally accepting that that's what the lance should all be about, just guarding everything and countering right back. Of course, the option to evade lance is still possible if you want to gem an evasion, or you kind of get a hint of that when you use the evasion mantle. All in all, World's iteration of lance is fantastic. Lance being one of my favorite weapons, I was very satisfied. Now after going over everything that lance got in World and getting used to it, you might be feeling a little discouraged going into Gen Ultimate, but don't worry. First off, I'm actually going to talk about the arts, since lance has very good hunter arts in this game. The first will be the Lance's best hunter art and one of the best hunter arts in the game, which is Enraged Guard. This art is really good. It doesn't take that long to charge, and what it basically is, is just a block. But, the stronger the attack that you block, the stronger damage buff you give yourself. So basically you block the attack, and then you absorb that damage into your weapon. This is a huge damage buff, and if you're really going for damage in your hunt, then you're very likely going to be taking this hunter art. The next hunter art is Corkscrew Jab. I really like this attack because it just feels very anime-like, and not only does it look good, but it actually does a lot of damage. Keep in mind that it's not one big hit, but a bunch of small hits in the attack. The next one is Shield Assault, which is pretty much a guarded charge, where you end with a Shield Bash and a Lance Jab. This one's good for safely closing distances between you and the monster, as the whole way through you're blocking in front of you. And the last one, which was the new hunter art that it's getting in Gen Ultimate, is the Healing Guard. And basically, it makes it so that every time you block, you heal yourself and your teammates if they're around you. It's kind of like a life powder worth of health, pretty much. Now, when it comes to the styles, I want you to keep something in mind. Even though Guild style is usually the old reliable style, in this case, it's gonna be Striker. The reason for this is because every other style besides Striker is not gonna have the traditional triple poke, and instead they're gonna get their last hit replaced with this little drill poke. And every style, including Guild, has this, except for Striker. There's nothing inherently wrong with this drill poke. It does pretty good damage, and since it's multiple attacks, it's pretty good for applying status and elemental damage. The only thing is that the animation is kinda long, and you don't really want to get stuck there. So if you really want the traditional 1, 2, 3 poke, then Striker is the only style that will give you this. So speaking of which, let's start with Striker. Striker will have the traditional moveset only losing the ability to jump in the lance charge and turn around in the lance charge as well. Other than that, it'll have everything you like about lance. Now there's a couple of reasons why Striker is very popular. For one, you're able to take three hunter arts. You can either take two of the absolute evade arts and just enraged guard, or you can take readiness, enraged guard, and corkscrew jab, which is a nice combo, or you know, whatever you want. But Striker will give you the most variety in your hunt. Another reason is the Lance Charge, a traditional move that Lance has always had, but in Striker, the motion values of the Charge Poke are just obscenely strong. They're stronger than any other style. 
Because of this, the striker playstyle will revolve around getting as many charge pokes as you can, since it's your highest damage attack. The only drawback is I guess trying to get used to this new charge poke kind of playstyle. Guild has all of the moveset included, but again, it has the drill poke at the end so it doesn't really feel like all reliable, but because of how striker works, guild is not very often used. Then is Aerial. Aerial is pretty interesting, again it's got the drill poke, but your aerial attacks and your jump attack also have the drill poke worked into it too. So aerial is kind of good for applying elemental and status damage because you're doing a bunch of rapid hits. It also feels pretty interesting to just be in the air all the time with lands. Now the next style, which is probably the second best for lands, is Adept. The countering based playstyle of Adept worked in perfectly with the lands, and it really made you feel like a living shield pretty much. It does have the drill poke, but because of the other options that you have, it doesn't feel as clunky using it, and it also lets you work with either a full raw approach or an elemental approach too. Brave is pretty interesting. Once you're in brave mode, you're able to do this guard point counter, which is pretty good. It also lets you loop your regular pokes over and over again, so you won't have to do the triple poke, and instead you can poke, poke, counter, poke, poke, and so on. The only problem with this is that it doesn't really gain much else, so the fact that you have to get into brave mode just to make the weapon kinda good is not really worth it. It is somewhat of a different playstyle, but it doesn't really bring anything that interesting to the table. And last is just alchemy. Do a barrel roll! Has no noticeable combat difference except for the fact that it's just like guild and can't counter, and you can provide SP support for your team. What you'll notice is that if you want to be a bit more safe and secure, you might go more with Adept, but if you want to be a bit more risky and do more damage, you'll take Striker. These are pretty much the two best styles that you'll most likely find yourself using, and both of them combined pretty much equal Worlds Lance. All in all, both iterations of Lance are safe, secure, and consistent. You'll find most of what you like about Lance and World in Generations Ultimate. One thing you want to keep in mind though, is that Lance and Gen Yu is better off solo. It becomes kind of a pain to play online because you'll either be tripping your teammates or they'll be tripping you a lot, so it's a very good solo weapon. If you're a Lance man, I think you'll have an easy time transitioning in between the two games. I hope this helped you see the difference between the weapon in the two games, and I hope I gave you an idea of what to look for and what to expect when you try out Generations Ultimate. Thanks for watching, and happy hunting.